we'll be solving the 10th challenge on Ethernaut called Reentrancy. Scroll down. The goal of this level is to steal all funds from the contract. So I'll copy this code. And then I'll click on Get New Instance. Confirm the transaction. Inside my code editor, I pasted our objective and the contract that I copied over from Ethernaut. The goal of this challenge is to steal all funds from the contract below. Let's take a look at the contract. So scrolling down, the only place I see where ETH is sent out out of this contract is inside the function withdraw when it calls message.sender.call and then sending the amount of ETH that was specified from the input. Other than that, I don't see anywhere where ETH can be transferred out out of this contract. So let's take our focus onto this function. I see that this function withdraw takes in an input and if balance of message.sender is greater than or equal to the amount, then they will be able to withdraw the amount. This line of code will send the ETH to message.sender for the amount and then afterwards it will update the balance. This is a classic reentrancy. So what we can do is we call the function withdraw when it sends some amount of ETH it will trigger the fallback function and then from our fallback function we'll be able to trigger the function withdraw again to withdraw more ETH and only after we're done with our reentrancy attack then this balance will be updated. So if we can get this balance of message.sender to be greater than the amount to withdraw then we will be able to perform a reentrancy. So let's focus on how we can update this balance to be something greater than zero. I've highlighted the balance state variable and if I scroll up, I can see that when we call the function donate, it updates the balance up to. So what we can do is donate one ETH to ourselves, and then call the function withdraw for one ETH. Our balance will be one ETH. The amount that we're going to be withdrawing will be one ETH. This will first send the ETH back to us. This will trigger the fallback function inside our contract. So we will be able to perform a reentrancy attack to call the function withdraw again. We can continue calling the withdrawal function until all of the ETH inside this contract is drained. I've created another file where we will be writing our code. I've also declared an interface. The two functions that we're going to be calling is donate and withdraw. First, I'll store the target as an immutable variable inside this contract tag. I reentrancy private immutable and then I'll name it target. And then we'll initialize this inside the constructor constructor address underscore target target is equal to i reentrancy underscore target we'll write our function called attack and this will be a function that we're going to be calling to initiate the attack this will be external and since we're going to be sending some ETH to this contract this will be payable inside this function attack we'll call donate and then withdraw when we call the function withdraw the reentrancy contract will send us back some ETH into this contract. So this will trigger the fallback function that we will write inside here. We will declare a receive external and this will be payable. And inside here we will perform a withdraw again, performing a reentrancy attack. Let's write out the details. We will start with the function attack. First we will donate one ETH into the target. So say target dot donate. We will donate to ourselves. So say address this for the amount value 1 ETH will be 10 to the 18, 1 ETH 18. Once we call donate, this will update the balance inside the reentrancy contract. And next we'll call the function withdraw to trigger the reentrancy attack. Target dot withdraw amount 1 ETH. So when we call this function withdraw, the reentrancy contract will send us back some ETH. So this will call the receive function inside our contract. So inside here, we'll call target dot withdraw again, withdraw 1e18. Now at this point, what's gonna happen is we call withdraw, the reentrancy contract will send us back some ETH. So this will trigger the receive function. And then we call withdraw again, and the target contract will send us back another ETH, which will trigger the receive function again. And then we call withdraw again, and the loop continues. So at some point, we'll need to break this loop. So we'll say that if the amount of beef that we can withdraw from the target contract is equal to zero, then we'll stop calling the reentrancy attack. We'll stop the loop. First, we'll get the amount that we can withdraw. Uint amount is equal to 
address target dot balance this will be the maximum amount that we can withdraw but however if you look at the function withdraw we can only withdraw the amount that we donated so inside here what we need to do is we need to say the minimum of the amount that we donated 10 to the 18 and the balance of the contract i have not defined this function yet so i'll define it here function min uint x uint y private peer returns u int and this function will return the minimum of x and y return if x is less than or equal to y question mark then return x otherwise return y okay so we now have the minimum of the amount that we can withdraw and we'll continue this loop as long as the amount is greater than zero if amount is greater than zero then call withdraw on target so that is the reentrancy attack we'll finish up the function for attack once the reentrancy is over, this part of the code will finish executing and then it will move on to the next line of code. Let's do a quick check, make sure that the balance of the target is equal to zero. So we say require address target dot balance is equal to zero with the error message target balance greater than zero and once we drained all of the ETH from the target contract, we'll send all of this amount of ETH back to us. And we also delete this contract by saying self destruct payable message dot sender. We're deleting this contract by calling self destruct and whatever if that is inside this contract at this point will be sent back to message dot sender. That will be us. Okay, so that completes the hack contract. Let's compile this. I'll paste this over to remix and then we'll execute the attack. Inside the receive function, I made a mistake over here. 1e18 this should be amount okay i'll hit ctrl s to compile the contract then click on deployment tab and before we deploy the hack contract we'll need to get the address of the reentrancy contract to do that i'll go back to ethernet website back inside ethernet i've opened my browser console by typing f12 and i'll copy the address of the instant address inside the console back inside remix paste the address of the reentrancy contract and then click on deploy Okay, the contract was deployed successfully. Let's scroll down and then open the hack contract. And we're going to be calling the function hack. If I look at the function hack, it's going to send one if. So to this function, we'll need to send one if. Make sure that I've selected ether. And here I'll put in one. And then call the function attack. Confirm the transaction. And the transaction is successful. Inside the function attack, there is a check at the very bottom that checks that the balance of the target is equal to zero. So this means that we successfully drained all of the ETH from the target contract. Let's head over to Ethernet. Back inside Ethernet, the last thing that I'll do is submit the instance. Confirm. Here we're checking that we successfully completed this challenge. Once you do, you'll see the button change to go to next level.